the season finale of Rizzoli and Isles, Jane and Maura end up in a pretty dangerous hostage situation. And at the end of the season, uh, Jane gets gets hurt. She gets wounded. She shoots herself in order to, um, you know, save her brother. Frankie. And season two, it's been months later after she's been hurt and she's not back in the job yet. And so she's dealing with all the psychological and physical changes that she's gone through. I'll tell you this, we get to meet um, a past love interest of Jane's that's very, very loaded and heated and heavy for her. That all comes after, you know, she shot herself to save her brother. When I read Dr. Isles, I just thought she was so cool. I loved who she was and how she embodied this kind of feminine strength and yet she was, you know, a medical examiner. I mean, I've said it a million times, a procedural show has been perfected. Everyone knows what it is. Everyone knows what's coming. Everyone knows the trajectory of the bullet and all that stuff. And on this one, yes, we have that, but I think ours is more realistic because, you know, when I was doing all my research with the Boston Homicide Unit, as you're standing over a dead body, people are talking about, you know, what they had for lunch and look at this guy's shoes. And it's life that happens uncensored around a horrible situation. We laugh a lot. We have a lot to laugh about. We share a similar humor. You know, we both have families, we have children. We have a lot to talk about outside of playing these characters, and I think that that helps. A lot of reporters come in, they're like, so, tell me what it's really like. And I'm like, uh, what do you want to know about the vacations that our families take together, or the fact that we have lunch every day together, or that we love and adore each other, and that we're friends? And, you know, I think it's exceptionally sad that it's played off as such a big shock that women like each other. I'm not really sure why that's so difficult for people to believe, but, yeah. sorry. <laughs> when we did the role for the first time together and read together, we had instant chemistry, and, and that's great to be able to count on that when you're doing a scene and know that, like, you just, you sort of click together is, I think, a huge part of it. She's exceptionally funny. I think that she gets to sort of tap into that because of what's written for her. Like, you know, she just recently had a baby and I keep saying like she gave birth to comedy because it's just all the time. Angie is my best audience, actually. <laughs> what do we not know about Angie? She's totally nuts. She'll do anything. I love daring her to do things because she's usually up for it. Or she's really good at like if somebody did something you could sort of say to her, go tell them. But that was just not cool and very quickly she'll jump into like a Doberman protect you stance and she'll like go for it. It's great to have a buddy like that. I'm always like, like don't mess with me. Got Angie. Hi, I'm Sasha Alexander. Hi, I'm Angie Harmon, and you're watching TV Guide Magazine.